Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt called Hanging Gardens. This is a cozy quilt designs pattern. We've had a lot of customers asking us, please show us how to make this pattern. So let's go in and get started. We've got the pattern right here. It has really interesting pieced borders and these little black accent fabrics that kind of drop down the pattern really looks fun and it's not as difficult as it looks. So we have a nice jelly roll made out of brighter batiks and we're going to put it on a light blue background. For hanging gardens, we're going to need some strips, some two and a half inch strips and quite a bit of background and a little bit of accent fabric. So here is the strip set that we're going to use. So I've got 20 strips here and 20 more here that are exactly the same and it's nice and bright jewel colors. And so instead of putting this on a cream background like they show in the pattern, I'm going to use this light blue because I think they will just show up much better on there. You need quite a bit of yardage. We're making the um, what they call the twin size on here, but it's 78 by 97. So that's a, a really large twin. That's more like a full size. So you need four and a quarter yards of this and you need a little over a yard of your accent and we are going to need something for the outside border but I really like to make the patchwork first and then hold up some different fabrics and audition them to see what will look good around there. I've separated my strips because they're going to get subcut. So all of these are going to get subcut the same way then these are going to get subcut a little bit different for the smaller parts of the block. And then these five we're going to reserve because they are going to do the patchwork outside here. So I'm going to make the subcuts. I'm just going to follow the pattern and do the numbers that it says on there. I have to open up the fold to get these last few subcuts and I'm going to try to avoid the fold that came here on the bolt because it's not always easy to get it cut perfect there. So usually we can cut and eliminate that part completely. Now our jelly rolls are cut really straight and they don't have an elbow, but you'll find that some cuts from other companies are not quite as straight because they can't all iron their fabrics ahead of time. We iron everything completely flat. So I can use the middle, but I still try to avoid it. All right, that's all we need out of that group. Now we're going to take the next group and do its subcuts. Now I'm going to stack these up. I'm comfortable cutting eight layers of batik. So I'm going to stack up four fabrics or no more than four fabrics at a time. So I've got four here, four here, four here, four here, four here, and then we'll put the last couple here by themselves. That way I can cut them in bulk. So since these all get the same subcuts, I can just cut and it'll get all those all at the same time. It'll save you a lot of time in the cutting. The patchwork pieces for the blocks are all done and now we just have to cut up the accent. So this is just some two and a half inch strips and then we've got a couple of two inchers for the outside, for that little inner border there. So again, I'm gonna put my weight up here on these long cuts and I always do that on the long cuts because it keeps my uh, ruler from moving. This is all we need right here for the patchwork blocks. So I'm just going to lay one out so you can see what it looks like. Now this is a black batik. It looks like it's all the way black but there's actually maybe a hint of blue in it. It's not perfectly flat. So we're going to pair up the prints. So I'm going to use the same print here and here. Then we're going to put strips like this. And again, I'm going to pair them up. Now they won't fit on here exact right now because my seam allowances aren't stitched yet. So we've got a four and a half and a six and a half. And then we're going to do a little bit longer. And I think we'll do a different color. So maybe we'll do pink this time and we'll find the exact same pink for over here. So we're just doing a simple layout here. Then we've got to get our longest pieces. 
So we're just, it's kind of like a log cabin with three on one side only. And now maybe we'll pick a third color, maybe green. So again, whatever you put here, you want to get the longer piece and do it down there. So I don't normally plan out every single block like this. I'm just laying this out so you get an idea of what the block looks like. It's really simple to piece. So what I will do is instead of making one block at a time and picking it out from all these stacks, I will make the exact number of these that I need and then I will put this on and then this on and then I will come to my stack of largest pieces and see what looks best on the outside of each block. So they'll be really easy to stitch up. And we're gonna take this one over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how fast we can stitch it up. First step is to make this little four patch unit here. So I'm gonna put these right in front of me here. That's gonna go on top of there and that's gonna go on top of there and I'm just gonna stitch both of these seams. Now we'll just alternate the directions of the way the seam is facing. So the first one this way, and the second one the other way. And now we're gonna stitch this seam. So those seam allowances, you can see they're going in opposite directions, and it makes it real easy to get that intersection matched up nicely. and we'll press this to one side. And I'm actually gonna have to check the pattern right now because I can't remember if this lays this way or that way. I'm pretty sure it goes this way, but it's always a good idea to get your pattern and double check before you sew the rest of the pieces on. So I've got the squares facing the right way. It is going to be facing down towards the far corner of the block every on every block. So now we're just gonna sew this piece and then this piece. This one, this one, this one, this one. So this part, again, it goes really fast because they're cut the right size now, so this is going to fit on here just exactly. And because I'm sewing this with batiks and they finger press so easily, I probably won't stop and iron the block until I have it all the way done. Now we're gonna do the pink ones. And again, they're gonna fit exact. You do need to be careful that you're using a quarter inch seam because the pieces are cut so that they will fit exactly only if you're using that quarter inch seam. Now we'll just put the last pieces on. So there's the whole block, really fun, really quick. So these are gonna be hanging like this, and then they're gonna have more of the black accents hanging down. And so it sews up really, really fast, and we don't have to make that many blocks. So I, I'm gonna be making 18 of these blocks, so that part is gonna piece up really fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of the blocks, then I'll show you how to cut the background, and then we'll start putting the quilt all together. I finished piecing all of the blocks, and I've laid some out here so you can get kind of an idea of the colors. They're really jewelly looking, really nice jewel tones. And they're going to be on that light blue gray background and then we're gonna have more of these accent colors between. But I'm starting to see how fun this is gonna be. So the next step is to work on some of the patchwork cornerstones. So these are actually going to have sashing and cornerstones and the cornerstones is going to be more patchwork like this along with the background so let's get the strips we need to make those cornerstones for the cornerstones we just need two background strips and two accent strips and they're cut two and a half inches wide and the pattern says cut these in half along the fold so we can work with half a strip at a time so we'll just slice these really quick and then we'll take all of them over and we're just going to stitch one of these to one of these and then we're going to 
cut it into smaller units and make our cornerstones. Now the reason the pattern has you cut them in half is because as we've mentioned before, sometimes where that fold is, the strip is not always straight. It sometimes has an elbow in it. And if you cut it in half, you know you're never going to get that part in your patchwork. So we're just going to use a careful quarter inch seam. Then we're going to press it towards the dark accent color. So you're going to want to do that with all, all of your strips there. And it does make it easy to work with when you've got this short little piece. So we're going to sew them all together, then finger press it towards the dark side, and then we're going to iron it and then cut. Here's all my strip units, and I'm just layering them up here, but laying them on parallel lines. So I've got probably five or six layers here, including seam allowances, and I'm comfortable cutting that amount. You can cut the strip units, so you could cut this individually if you want, but I just find it saves a lot of time to cut them all at once. Now, this is not a real long span, so I can pretty much get all my weight here. If you want, for help, you can always put your weight up top there. I don't find I usually need it on something this short, but, but you may like that. So this is, again, cut in two and a half inch pieces. So we're just gonna cut these into a bunch of little pieces. Then we're going to stitch them back together, checkerboard style. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these and we're gonna turn one around and then we're gonna stitch right there. And of course the seam allowances are already going in opposite directions, so that'll go really quick. So I'm chain piecing these, I'm just taking one right side up with the light on the top and then putting the dark on top matching up that center and stitching with a quarter inch seam and we'll have them all done in a jiffy we've got all of the patchwork parts for the pattern now we've got these nice blocks We've got these cornerstone blocks, which are gonna go right here. Now we just need to cut the rest of the background. There's a lot of different shapes and sizes of background pieces. So watch the pattern, read it very carefully, and I recommend checking off each piece as you cut it. These squares are what we need for the corner setting triangles and the side setting triangles. Now the corner setting triangles are gonna get cut in half diagonally just once and this will assure that the grain will be straight when we put these in the four corners so these are all four of the corners very far corners of the quilt and so we've got straight grain here and straight grain here so we're going to set those aside now the side setting triangles like this one here it needs to be cut both ways on the diagonal. And that's so that we will have a straight grain on the side of the quilt. So I'm just gonna line up from point to point and I'm gonna use my weight to help hold this because it's pretty long. So I'm gonna cut it this way and I'm gonna leave everything in place and now I'm gonna cut it, oh, moved a little, so just slide that back if that happens. And now I'm going to cut it the other way. So we're going to do that same thing. So you can see these guys here for the sides. Now we're going to do the same thing here and here. We're going to cut them both ways and these will be fitting into the patchwork between the squares. To keep the design fluid, the pieced triangles that go in the bottom, they're going to be pieced with the accent and a couple of side triangles and these are going to fit right down here on the bottom of the quilt and that's going to help that design of accent um, diamonds go all the way down so we're making two of these right here so we're going to take a patchwork piece 
and we are going to sew this onto it and trim it off and then we are going to stitch this onto it. So we're going to make two of those. So we're going to sew this onto here and let all that excess hang off. We're just going to use a quarter inch seam. Now we're going to press it like this. And I'm going to trim this off with my blade carefully and I'm going to iron it before I sew the other triangle on to here. Let's iron this nice and flat and trim off that excess. I think it's easiest if we turn it this way because then I can put my lines along there and get it nice and straight. We have all the parts and pieces we need for the quilt now. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of how this is going to be laid out because the blocks are on point. So we're going to have four of these corner triangles. Then we're going to have a row like this with some little triangles. And then we're going to have a patchwork block and every patchwork block is going to get one of these rectangles on each side and then the big side setting triangles on each side. Then we've got a row like this and we've got these guys in the middle and it's real important to look at the orientation of this. So you're going to want to keep checking your pattern to make sure you've got everything laid out correctly. You don't want to turn these like this because then they won't be facing the right way. So what I did is this is the smaller size quilt. They give you a picture of all the other sizes. And so I took the size I'm going to do and I drew lines across the rows so I can keep clear in my mind which row I'm making. So we're just going to make the row one at a time and then we're going to trim off the dog ears here each time and then we will start to build the quilt. Thanks for watching part one of our tutorial on hanging gardens. Now be sure to check back for part two so you can see the whole quilt get finished up.